Time Magazine lists the homicide of Elizabeth Short, more famously referred to as the Black Dahlia murder, as one of the world's most infamous unsolved murder cases. It has been the subject of numerous works of fiction, countless theories and speculations, and a staggering amount of confessions, none of which have led to a conclusion. It is a mysterious and gruesome tale that caught nationwide attention in post-World War II America, spawning decades worth of conjecture and doubt. At the very least, it's a story that lends some not-so-wholesome insight into the psyche of the greater public, the ability of the justice system to handle cases, and of the morality of sensationalizing murder cases. It was an inconspicuous morning on the outskirts of Los Angeles on the west side of South Norton Avenue on January 5th, 1947. Betty Bursinger, a local of the area, was perusing the then undeveloped section of Tinseltown when she made a ghastly discovery. What she thought had been a discarded mannequin turned out to be the mutilated corpse of a woman. To describe the scene as grisly would be an understatement. The corpse was in two pieces, bisected neatly under the ribs. Lacerations were all over the body, including a Glasgow smile, meaning the assailant had cut the woman's face from the corner of her lips to her ears, giving a nightmarish appearance of a bloody smile. The victim's intestines were tucked neatly under the buttocks, and the corpse had been arranged to make a horrifying pose. Authorities were able to identify the identity of the victim as Elizabeth Short, a would-be actress from Boston. They used fingerprints to uncover her personhood, as Short had been arrested in 1943 for underage drinking. She was 22 years old at the time of her death. Autopsies revealed that her body had been drained and cleaned with gasoline to cover up evidence. The lack of bruising around the body section suggested that the severing occurred posthumously. The cuts were made with such precision that investigators believed that the killer may have been a surgeon doctor, or some other sort of medical professional. The official cause of death was shock associated with blunt force trauma to the head, as well as the lacerations made to the face. It was a harrowing scene of brutality that caught fire in the national media. Newspaper reporters at the time added a new level of ghoulishness to the proceedings with the unscrupulous methods they employed, just for the sake of creating a good story. Reporters for the LA Examiner contacted Short's mother immediately after police discovered her identity, but rather than notify her, told her that Elizabeth had won a beauty contest. This way, they could get as much information from her as possible before she went into shock at the horrible news. The levels of unethical behavior didn't stop there, as once the reporters informed the mother of her daughter's death, paid to fly her to LA, rather than allowing her to go straight to the police. They held her to conduct their interviews all in the pursuit of sensationalizing the story. The papers ran with deceitful accounts of the story that painted Elizabeth Short as a wild pleasure seeker whose promiscuity led to her demise. The LA Times is credited with giving her the nickname The Black Dahlia, which may have been inspired by the 1946 film noir The Blue Dahlia, calling the homicide a sex fiend slang. Despite extensive investigations that included over 150 suspects, no arrests were ever made. This is especially alarming considering a phone call police received on January 24, 1947. A chief investigator spoke with a man claiming responsibility for the murder, stating that he would turn himself in, but not before he had some fun with the police. He stated that he'd be sending in Elizabeth's belongings. Police were unsure what to make of the call until they received an envelope on January 24th that contained many of Short's effects, including her birth certificate. Like Short's corpse, the items had been cleaned with gasoline, leading police to believe that the item had come directly from the killer. The same day, the LA Examiner received a package with Short's shoe and handbag. Despite being cleaned, partial prints were still lifted from some of the items and were sent to the FBI for processing. Unfortunately, the prints were damaged in transit, becoming useless. A few days later, at 10 a.m., on January 26th, the examiner received a letter stating that the killer would be turning himself in. However, at 1 p.m. that same day, they received a second letter stating that he had changed his mind. Even more mysteriously, months later, a note was found in a pile of clothes at the edge of the beach near Breeze Avenue in the Venice neighborhood. The apparent suicide note was written by someone claiming responsibility for Short's murder, but that he was too cowardly to turn himself in and that suicide was the only way to resolve things. Many personal clothing items were found, but none helped investigators identify any new suspects. Much to the chagrin of the public, the case became cold by the spring of 1947, after a lucrative reward was offered for information leading to an arrest, over 60 confessions were made. None of them led to arrests. Since the initial investigation, over 500 people have claimed responsibility. Some of the people who have confessed are either too young to have committed the crime, or weren't even born yet, Public outcry led to an investigation of the LAPD for a lack of efficacy when it came to investigating and solving murder cases, especially ones involving women and children. To this day, no arrests have been made. There's been a multitude of theories, accusations, and speculations surrounding the Black Dahlia. 
It has been one of the most thought about cases in American history, with many books, both investigatory and fictional, published on the subject. Notable amongst these is the 1987 novel The Black Dahlia by James Elroy, which was adapted for film by Brian De Palma in 2006. Both the novel and the film adaptation have little to do with the factual account of the murder. Schwartz's remains are buried at the Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland, California. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. See you next time.